this rangefinder is very much the same as that found on the Retina 2A cameras. So we have a prism at this end. The prism is blacked off at this end, it's covered in black paint. On later cameras, the 2C, 3C types, there is no black paint on the end here. It relies on the refractive index of the glass, giving total internal reflection at that point. But on the 2As, that glass is black. Don't muck with that surface. It's intended to be black. So we take out the two screws here that hold that prism on. Now those screws are used to adjust the vertical alignment in the rangefinder. And I'll pop these components to one side. So we're concerned with, when we go to clean this, we're concerned with two glass surfaces. This visible surface at the front and the other surface visible down inside the tube there and to the body of the rangefinder. Here's our return spring and it's held in place with that pin. So I'll lift that pin out and out of the spring completely. We have a single screw at the pivot here and I'll loosen that. This is usually quite tight. You want a decent sized screwdriver to do that. So we have this screw, the washer that's underneath it, a wavy washer, and then we have the arm. Yeah, the spring just fell away from the arm there, but that's, uh, I'll show you how to put that back later. So we'll put those components to one side. Point of interest here. Well, this collar that it runs on, this bush in the centre, it's split. I don't think it's exactly circular because of the split. Because it sort of springs in position, it's probably vaguely egg-shaped. If you want the rangefinder to assemble back to where it came from effectively, so that your adjustments are fairly similar, you need to make note of which way this open slot is running. So what I normally do is put a scratch on that surface there, so I've got something to align it to, Put a little scratch on the brass piece either side of this slot so I can tell which way up it was. Then we can pop that, push that bush out, and that can be cleaned. So we'll pop that arm to one side, and here we have the body of the rangefinder. I'm going to clean this in the ultrasonic cleaner, and I can tell you from experience. Got this piece I'm just unscrewing now will lose its paint if that's put into the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's held in with two black screws. It's black painted. It's quite shiny metal under there. I don't know whether it's stainless steel, but whatever it is, the paint doesn't stick to it very well. And if you put it through the ultrasonic cleaner, it'll come off. We have a single screw holding the rear eyepiece in place. Now you can see I'm holding this over the edge of that wooden block and that's because this glass here extends beyond the front edge and I don't want to disturb that or damage it. So I'm holding this over the edge of the wooden block so that's not touching anything. Remove that single screw. Take off the frame, the cover frame, and there's the rear eyepiece, and I can see that looks quite greasy looking, cloudy. So we'll just knock that piece out, and here we have the body. 
So in the body, what's of interest here is the semi-silvered mirror. Now the surface that forms the image for us is the inside surface here, not this outside surface. That's a little bit cloudy. If it was very, very dirty, I would probably choose to clean this outside surface first using a cotton bud and some glass cleaner before I put this into the ultrasonic cleaner. And I would use let the ultrasonic cleaner clean that inner surface, which is the, the mirrored or very shiny surface in there. I don't I never want to overdo the cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, silvered finishes will disappear in the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's a toss-up whether you do them for a brief period of time and get them almost clean, or do them for a great a longer period of time and get them so clean that they've disappeared. So you have to pick a, a use, useful balance. There's one other component in the body. This screw here holds a little section on the inside. Now that little tube on the inside has a lens in it. To get it that, at that to clean, you'd really need to remove it from the body if you're going to clean it manually. Its position in the body is very important. There's a slot there so that you can shift this forward or backwards. Now the effect of the position of this affects the relationship of the two images one from the prism and one coming in through the eyepiece. If this is in the correct position, those two images stay in the same relationship to each other. If it's shifted to one end or the other, you'll find that as you shift your eye slightly in the finder, those images will diverge or move towards each other, which defeats the usefulness of the rangefinder. So, best policy is do not disturb the position of that centre section. Leave it entirely in there and clean it in an ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, leave it alone completely. It's two glass surfaces, quite small. They'll have no effect on your, the brilliance of your viewfinder image or how cloudy the image is. If they were quite dirty, they would have some bearing on how bright the patch, the rangefinder patch was on there. But best policy, do not disturb that part. It'll clean in the ultrasonic cleaner or don't clean it at all. And this part is ready for cleaning. The arm. Now what's of interest here, I want to clean this surface of any grease or dirt and the glass piece at all, and this serves too of course, and the glass, I'll clean that with a cotton bud and some glass cleaner, inside and out. On the prism, I'll clean this surface, and I'll clean the inside surface, again with a cotton bud and some glass cleaner. And the rear eyepiece. This is the dirtiest component here by far. If there was one component that was creating most of the haze in this rangefinder, it was this piece. If you did nothing else, cleaning that component and popping it back in would probably improve your rangefinder by 50%. I'll clean up some of these components for the rangefinder now. So before I pop this piece in the ultrasonic cleaner, I just want to get the grease off that surface. There's no point having that grease swirling around in the uh, water I'll be using. The arm. Likewise, I want rid of any of the old grease there and dirt. And particularly on this inner surface here where that moves on that bush, make sure that that's clean. The 
the other mechanical components here are the washer, the bush and that washer there so those I will take the opportunity to remove any old grease from now the old grease will have uh, quite probably gone hard, dry, possibly even sticky ok it's set to go and answer the door it's the postman bringing me more cameras to repair so someone in Austria and someone in Israel will be waiting for their cameras ok those components are all clean or as clean as they need to be I'll clean the glass components here that we're going to clean by hand which is this piece I'm checking that to see how that appears in my make sure those surfaces look good the prism the front surface as I said we can't do much about the painted surface there I'm looking at the state of this prism and it looks to be good we're getting good reflectivity there of course when you use a cotton bud in a place like that to white surfaces it's easy to end up losing a thread of cotton down there and I can see I've got one just right there which we'll just remove that component's good the last piece I want to deal with by hand is the rear lens for the rangefinder and that was noticeably hazy This rear piece of glass is convex on one side and flat or very close to flat and on the rear surface. The convex surface goes inwards on that rangefinder. The flat surface goes towards the eye. So those components are clean to my satisfaction and next I have to take this away and clean it in the ultrasonic cleaner which is uh, another exciting task so the setup for ultrasonic cleaning here is really quite simple use some dishwashing detergent in my ultrasonic cleaner I have a glass that I actually clean the range finder components in and then the outer tank will just be filled with warm water so I'll show you how I do that so here I've got the water in the tank some dishwashing detergent you only need a drop and warm water in this glass and fire up the cleaner and leave this to run and I normally run this for three minutes and when it finishes I'll come back, pull the range finder out, rinse it under hot water 
take it away, blow out all the moisture and then dry it completely using a hair dryer. Back and ready for reassembly. Let's see how we get on. Normally I put the mask on the front first with its two black screws. Before I do up the screws tight on this component I want to make sure that it is parallel with the edge of the body and that it's not down protruding down below the edge of the body otherwise it might catch on something. That looks good. I'll nip those screws up and I've just lost a tiny bit of black paint on that edge there. So we'll just touch that up with a black pen. Good as gold. Flip it over. Check there's no dust inside. Our rear lens, as I said before, convex surface goes in. The flat, or very nearly flat, it may be slightly concave surface, goes to the outside. There's the mask that holds it in place. And the single nickel plated screw. Run that down tight. That's sitting a bit crooked there, that mask. I'll just shift that. That's better. Sitting a bit square. So two major components here to go on are the arm and the prism. We'll put the arm on first. Is putting the prism on, it's first I'm likely to end up with fingerprints on the prism while I'm fighting with the other bit. Where is my log of wood gone? That was clever, how did I lose that? Found it. Here we go. Got put to one side while I was busy answering the door, I think. Okay. This component. Once we're on the inside here, with some molybdenum paste, and believe me, you need very little of that. Take our bush, make sure it's the right way up. Now I can tell by the marks I'd scratched on it. Line that slot up with the marks I'd scratched on the, the arm. That's good. On the body, wipe with molybdenum on that surface and it needs very little. If you can't see anything there, that's probably about the right amount. There's a spring that goes on this arm which had fallen off. So I'm going to look at the spring. 
look at the loops formed on the end of it and see why that should be. Well that one is very very open that loop on that end and I suspect that it's got a bit of a stretched look about it suggests to me that it's been a little bit abused and I'm gonna to have to find some special tweezers pliers to tighten that up I'm just cutting that seconds of wasted time out of the video now that spring yes it certainly looks slightly abused there so I'm just going to tighten that loop up That'll do. Now I've got to hook this onto the arm. There's a little hole in the arm that, that clips into or should do. It's a bit reluctant. And the bush fell out while we were talking about it. Which end was I using that one? Well I'm having a day of it today. If the door's not being banged on by various people or the phone's not ringing the camera runs out of card space or runs out of batteries or run up against a file size limit. However, I did get the spring back in place and now I can reassemble this. I have my bush in the correct position. I'll just check that. I've applied a little bit of molybdenum around this top surface so that spring will run on it. Place our washer on the top and there should be a single screw here. Now all the time I'm doing this I'm holding the arm back against the body of the rangefinder back against its infinity position while I'm doing this. That's so that that bush will remain in the correct orientation in the arm. That's in place, so I'll tighten that up. And we have the pin that keeps that spring in place. So I normally drop the spring away from the Tip this so that the spring runs away from the body, feed the pin through it, pull it back into position. You can see that spring falls into a notch in that pin. And then I check that the arm returns freely to the body. If it's slow, it means there's undue friction there somewhere, sometimes giving the arm a bit of a wiggle will free it up because it might mean that the bush is a bit tight in that arm and so it doesn't rotate freely around it. So there we have our rangefinder and the prism can go back on. Push that back home. There are two screws get those run down a little bit. If they're down to the surface that's quite far enough at the moment. Run its mate down. Check that that prism is back against the body and check that it's relatively square with the edge of the rangefinder. Then just run those screws down a little bit further. Those screws, 
they control the rotation of the prism on the mount. Start with the prism relatively square and that's a good place to start and if the images are vertically misaligned in the rangefinder, if the moving image, the image that you see shifting in the finder is higher, you tighten the rear screw. If the image, the moving image is lower, tighten the front screw. Now I'm just going to look through this and see how I go. The moving image is obviously low, so slacken the rear screw off slightly, tighten the front screw slightly, and honestly it takes very little to make quite a big difference. The moving image is still low. bit more. I'm closing in on it now. Alright, so the height's good. I'm going to look out the window at an infinity target. This will be fine-tuned on the camera. But I want to see Infinity targets come into line with each other. And they're pretty good. Alright, so I'm happy with that. That rangefinder is ready to go back on the camera body, which will be the next task. Here's the camera body. Now when I put the rangefinder back on the camera body, I usually put a tiny bit of lacquer on the, the base to stop it from shifting. So first off, I put a tiny bit of molybdenum on that cam. That cam surface is the one that runs against the post with the, from the focus. I put a very, very tiny amount of lacquer. On the corners of that surface. And that's to stop that rangefinder body from moving on the camera chassis uh, at a later date. Typically that sort of thing happens if the camera has been dropped. So the focus is set at infinity. I can pop this in place, draw it back, line up the holes, line up my screw holes, drop the first screw into position, Hopefully that fell in. Did it or did it not? No, it didn't. We'll do the second one, going back and get the first one afterwards. Drop the screw in, whereupon it should immediately drop directly down into this to the bottom. I think it's my screwdriver magnetised. I think it's picking this screw up. It is. Bugger. Let's try this then. If I've got a magnetic screwdriver, I might as well use it to my advantage. That's that screw started. What was happening there was as soon as I lowered my screwdriver into the hole, it, the screw lifted out from position and it was attracted to it. Run that screw down. What I normally do, 
these screws aren't quite tight yet. What I normally do is keep some pressure with my finger on the body of the range to push it to the back so that it's hard up against those screws. Which keeps it square with the camera body. Now if I can find the slot in the screw, I can nip that up. And it's mate. As we rack the focus in and out, you should see the arm on the rangefinder move. And now I've got to do the adjustments for that. There are three adjustments I really want to achieve here. First is the rest position for the infinity. So at this position with the camera closed, the arm on the rangefinder should be back against the body and adjusting it with this tiny screw here, I want the images to align perfectly for an infinity target. That's as far back as that arm ever needs to move at that stage. And my next adjustment, once that's been achieved, and that my vertical alignment has been adjusted with these two screws, is to adjust the infinity position. And that's done by loosening this lock screw here and using this screw to adjust it, effectively adjusting the the position of this arm relative to the boss on the top of that focus scale. So I'll do that now, back in a minute. Okay, I'm happy with the position of those three adjustments. Everything appears to be aligned correctly. Now I can close up the top of the camera. So, one last look at the rangefinder, make sure there's no dust or fingerprints on any of those surfaces. The same under the top cover. Our frame counter assembly can go in place. Fit the top cover. This slot in the back of the case has to go over the rewind lever at the back. Normally do is advance, wind the film sprocket forward using your thumb against it until the shutter is cocked. Hook the rear cover over so that the arm comes through that slot. To press the shutter release, which is sometimes easier said than done, as far as it'll go, put the top cover over the top. Check your frame counter at this stage. Almost certainly it's not meshed up with the gears correctly. That's good, that's free. So, points to watch here, that the advanced retard lever is sitting correctly, that the frame counter does revolve, and that the top cover is sitting down neatly so you've got access to the screw holes at each end. So I'll pop the two screws in. Pop up the rewind. I'll just feed the inner section up a bit by pushing it up from the inside. The chrome collar goes on the on there. The rewind knob on top of that. 
check that that goes up and down cleanly place something through the fork to stop it from turning on the inside then tighten the knob with your fingers so the rewind is good you can pull up to the rewind position that just lifts the center doesn't lift the, the outer part out of the spool out of the uh, cassette the advanced knob left hand threaded of course put the spanner on the top of the take up spool to stop it turning tighten down that knob with your fingers turning it anti-clockwise which is lefty tighty check once again that the shutter release works smoothly and it does shutter release button just screws on the top and can be tightened into position if I had the right pliers there is our camera body complete and all that needs to be done is to service the shutter and then fit it to the body